So before we move on to lymphocytes, I just kind of want to go over leukogram types. I talked about causes of neutrophilia, uh, but really when we talk about leukograms, we usually characterize the entire leukogram, not just the neutrophilia. It's just the neutrophilia often sort of leads the charge. And we had started with a stress neutrophilia. So a stress leukogram, of course, includes a mature neutrophilia. I'm just going to use arrows for the sake of time. And the defining feature of it is a lymphopenia. And I'm going to talk more in a different video about lymphocytosis. But the lymphopenia with stress is the characteristic finding of a stress leukogram. And the primary reason is that the lymphocytes, they go to lymphoid organs. And so that is why you see the lymphopenia. They can also go to the bone marrow, but they mostly go to lymphoid organs, such as lymph nodes. And that's, again, why you see the lymphopenia. You can also see a monocytosis. It's mild. So you may or may not see that. And you may or may not see an eosinopenia. And that mechanism is because eosinophils head to the bone marrow. Remember, other things you can see with a stress leukogram in general that would support it is an increase in glucose, so maybe a mild to moderate hyperglycemia. And if it's due to exogenous uh, administration of corticosteroids or Cushing's disease, you can also increase a liver enzyme that's induced by steroids in dogs called ALKFOS. So physiologic responses, remember, this is our happy, healthy animal. And again, this is a mature neutrophilia that's increased, so no left shift, and a lymphocytosis. This is usually relatively mild. We expect to see an increase in PCV, so an erythrocytosis, possibly an increase in platelets, both of these due to splenic contraction, possibly an increase in glucose due to epinephrine effects on glucose handling, but again, it's a happy, healthy animal where you tend to see a physiologic response. And so I'm gonna go through now kind of the different types of inflammation. So since we're sort of leading uh, our lymphocytosis and lymphocyte talk, uh, just paying attention to the fact that lymphopenia is stress and lymphocytosis is physiologic, but there are gonna be other causes of that whereas lymphopenia, the primary cause, is stress. So in terms of types of inflammatory leukograms, we have several. And I hate separating acute and chronic like this, but I'm going to do it just for demonstration. So when we talked about an acute neutrophilia or an acute inflammatory leukogram, we have a neutrophilia, and it could be greater than two times the upper reference limit. That's classically how we would definitively say that there's if there's just a mature neutrophilia that it's inflammatory, but it could be lower than that. You would have to prove it. So any number of neutrophils plus a left shift or plus toxic change. And so why this is acute is because it has to do with the amount of neutrophils in your storage pool is released into the blood to get to tissue. And so that's kind of our acute inflammation, meaning before the marrows really had time to undergo hyperplasia. Now you can always have active inflammatory components, even with chronic inflammation. So you can still have a left shift and toxic change. This really just has to do with the time point of when inflammation is occurring. You can also see increases in monocytes. You may or may not see concurrent stress as well. So overwhelming inflammation, again, can be a neutropenia, not in the ruminants, though. You may or may not have a left shift, which, of course, then not in ruminants makes it degenerate. Or if you have immature neutrophils, greater than mature, that makes it overwhelming inflammation. So chronic inflammation means that your marrow has had time to undergo myeloid hyperplasia. And this is an appropriate response to depletion of the storage pool and tissue demand for neutrophils where myeloid hyperplasia occurs and it increases your numbers of neutrophils. 
And so depending on tissue demand, that's going to determine, and the degree of uh, bone marrow stimulation and the degree of time or how long it's been since the inflammation started, that's going to determine your neutrophil number. So that's going to be variable. So that's one thing to realize. Things that tell you that there's definitively chronic inflammation occurring or almost definitively is if you have a concurrent lymphocytosis. Now remember from before that physiologic has a mature neutrophilia and a lymphocytosis, so you can't confuse them. So this would be neutrophil number variable, but certainly any time you have it greater than two times the upper reference limit, or you have a left shift or toxic change, those, along with the lymphocytosis, will definitely tell you chronic inflammation. So you can have a lymphocytosis, you can have a monocytosis, and then other eosinophils and basophils are possible as well. What else is going to support it is an increase in globulin, definitely supports it, in the absence of an increase in albumin, because it's not related to dehydration. Now, a subset of chronic inflammation is called something called a leukemoid response. And this is any neutrophil types, so total number of neutrophil greater than 50,000. And that's a specific type of chronic inflammatory response. And it can mean pretty severe inflammation, tissue inflammation. So the classic diseases that we see causing a leukemoid response uh, are well, the P's, so things that begin with a P. So pyometra is a classic. Pancreatitis, especially when it's severe with necrosis. Those are very common. Pyelonephritis is less common. And certainly pyothorax. There are a few others I list in your notes. The one that's not a P that we can see is immune-mediated hemolytic anemia. And again, that's a negative prognostic indicator. It means the anemia is so severe you're starting to have tissue death or the animal has thromboembolic disease causing tissue death. Some neoplasias can cause leukemoid responses because of necrotic portions of the tumor and then rare infections as well. In terms of lymphocyte numbers, they're going to be variable. So they can be increased, they can be normal, or they can be decreased. So although it's chronic inflammation, if the stress component is severe enough or significant enough, you'll have a lymphopenia. If there's enough chronic inflammation, you can have a normal lymphocyte count or a lymphocytosis. 